Welcome back YouTube. Today we're going to be looking at my two favorite exercises for the upper back. We're gonna go into why I like them so much and the techniques that you need to be using in the gym to get as much as you can out of them. Now, training the upper back region correctly is probably one of the most misunderstood things about training that I see people making a lot of mistakes around. And it also has a lot of big benefits beyond just adding pure muscle size or improving the looks of your body. To be more specific, when I talk about the upper back, I'm talking about the muscles called the traps and the rhomboids. Now, these muscles sit between your shoulder blades in your mid-back or upper back region, with the traps also running up around through your shoulders here and inserting into the base of your skull. So they cover a lot of surface area around your neck and shoulder region as well. Now, these regions between the shoulder blades and all the way up to the base of your neck here are some of the most common areas that I find people have a lot of issues and complaints with when it comes to things like tension and knots, or what they may term as stiff or tight muscles. And I've found time and time again that the vast majority of these people are making the exact same mistake with their training and don't understand how to train the upper back muscles properly. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to give you a little bit more detail on how and why these muscles um, should be trained a particular way, as that will help you make a lot more sense out of the exercises that I choose when it comes to my two favorite exercises. But first, I'm curious to hear a couple of things from you guys. First of all, of course, what are your favorite two exercises for the upper back if you do train it specifically? And how many of you have anything like stiffness or pain or tension that's through your neck or upper back region? Maybe you find yourself always needing to roll out some knots or trigger points along your mid back in that shoulder blade region. Or maybe you always seem to be carrying some tension through your shoulders and neck. If you experience this, drop me a comment and let me know. While I can't say for absolute sure that these exercises are necessarily going to help you, I can say with a fair amount of confidence that the techniques I'm going to show you in this video will be very, very helpful from a training perspective for you. Now, whether or not that directly carries across to improving your symptoms, if you have this tension or whatever it may be, it's really impossible for me to say here on YouTube, but fingers crossed. Anyway, while you're doing that, please do also give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Small actions like that go a very, 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 very long way to helping this channel gain more exposure and grow more, which means that I can create more content just like this for you to help you understand training and your body better. There's been a crazy amount of growth happening to the channel so far, and I really appreciate all of your continued support with things like liking and commenting and all those little things. So a big thank you to all of you if you've been here for a little while now. Now, onto the upper back. Before we get into the exercises, it's important for us to understand a little bit more about how the upper back muscles differ from other regions of the back. Because I've already done videos on lats and rear delts, which I'll leave links to up here in the corner, as well as in the description box in the pinned comments below, so you can check them out after we're done here. Um, but it's really important for us to understand what the differences are between the upper back versus those lats or rear delt regions. Because the back is an incredibly complex region and it has so many different muscle groups that all pull in slightly different directions. And most importantly, they all have different points of attachments to different bone structures. For example, the, the lat muscles, they have this fan shape to them that sweep across a very broad part of your back. Starting down around your lower back here into what's one of my favorite anatomical regions to say out loud, called the thoracolumbar fascia, and they sweep all the way around your torso, around your rib cage, into your arm. Their role is to pull that arm region down towards that lower back region, which is why certain arm parts and exercises seem to be working better for biasing the lats. Very broadly speaking, the best positions and movements for this will have your arm tracking not back behind your torso, but more so down towards your hips. Also, the lats don't really have a lot of leverage over the shoulder blades, so movement at the shoulder blades will occur as you do lat movements, but since the lats aren't really a prime mover of the shoulder blades, we don't really need to be cueing the shoulder blades to be doing anything in particular. 
Now, for the upper back muscles, in contrast, the traps and the rhomboids, they don't attach down at that lower back thoracolumbar fascia region. They attach through the spine in the middle of the back. And the other major attachment that we really care about for the mid-back muscles is the shoulder blades. So since these are the two main points of attachment, the roles of the upper back is to pull the shoulder blades back towards the spine, or what is known as retraction, or squeeze the shoulder blades back together, depending on how nerdy you want to get with your terminology. Now, due to the direction that the fibers run in, and the fact that traps also attach in other regions, such as through the shoulder and collarbone clavicle-ish region, there will also be slight preferences to different angles and degrees of elevation or shrugging that may be better to be pulling upon as well. But for the most part, it, that will be covered if you just add in a variety of different exercises. So broadly speaking, for upper back, we want to be choosing exercises that allow for as much movement to occur as possible at the shoulder blades. The more that we can get the shoulder blades squeezing back together into what you might term good posture and also pulling forwards into what's called protraction or what might be termed bad posture, the better. Because this is essential to be taking the muscles of the upper back through a complete range of motion. Like imagine this for a sec. Imagine I'm doing like a biceps curl exercise, but I only stay here in this short range here. I'm doing these like little half reps. Like yes, I'm training my biceps, but we can all clearly see how I'm not taking my biceps through a complete range of motion. And we can all understand why that might be limiting not just their growth potential, but also their overall strength and mobility and moving capacity through the shoulder and elbow joints. It would also make a lot of logical sense to us if we saw someone doing only this partial range here, and then they were to complain of some kind of like ache, pain, tightness, or tension through their arm or shoulder region. We sort of, we sort of understand why that would be. It's not always going to be the case where somebody doing a short range of motion is going to be experiencing pain or tightness, but it does make a fair bit of sense, even if you're not an expert in any of this kind of training or biomechanic stuff. Now, the same thing can be said for the muscles of the upper back. You see, a lot of what we tend to do and cue with training is to be squeezing back all the time. We're very, very good at this retraction or the squeezing of the biceps, to use that relative example. But it's not anywhere near as common to be cueing people to round or protract the shoulder blades or to hunch the upper back forwards. Because we call this bad posture and we categorize it as not good for us. And that's a huge mistake. We need to stop categorizing movements as good or bad and instead categorize them as what they are. They're just neutral. They all have the potential to be good or bad for some people, for sure. But by themselves, they're simply anatomical movements that your body should be able to go into at command. It's when we start to neglect certain positions over others or overemphasize certain positions over others that we might start creating some kind of imbalance in strength or deficits in overall moving capacity that could become problematic down the road. So to help clarify this point a bit more, let's start now taking a look at my two favorite exercises for the upper back, finally. First up, we have any sort of chest supported row with a flared elbow angle. Now this could be with dumbbells or cables or machines or bands or barbells, whatever you like. I do recommend mixing it up relatively frequently to give your body a different stimulus over time. But more important than that is how you're setting up and performing the movement. First of all, I like to use a chest support to help to provide a little bit more stability. This tends to allow for better output from the target muscles. It also removes the need to stabilize through your lower back. Because if you're doing, say, a freestanding barbell row, you'll typically find yourself fatiguing through your lower back well before your upper back gets a complete stimulus. Or you'll find it harder to keep good technique and a good position due to the relative instability. I still do a lot of freestanding or unsupported rows as well in my training, but if I had to choose just one thing to develop the muscles of the upper back, it would be something with some kind of chest support. Next, when it comes to the chest support, ideally you'll have something that has quite a low chest support or that's not too wide at all, so it doesn't restrict your movement. You'll see with the machines that I use and with how I set up on the incline bench for the dumbbell rows, I'm able to get a great degree of rounding or hunching through my spine. This allows me to pull the shoulder blades as far forwards as possible to take the muscles of the upper back through as much of that stretch or into that complete range of motion as possible. 
If you don't have this kind of chest support, you might find it better to simply do a single arm variation, as that will allow you to get the stability that you want using your non-working arm, whilst being able to take your working arm through the full range of motion. Now, finally and most importantly is where to put your arm. You want to choose whatever arm position here allows for as much movement to occur at your shoulder blade as possible. You'll generally find that if you would keep your elbows tucked into your sides, it's hard to keep your shoulder blades pulling forwards or back much whatsoever. But if you were to bring your elbows up higher and more in line probably with your shoulder height here, you're able to create a lot more movement in the back at the shoulder blade. For most people, I recommend starting at about this shoulder height here and seeing how you go from there. You might need to drop it down a little bit, but just use your own personal comfort to dictate where you should go around this kind of range. This is another reason why I really like the use of a chest support, as you can really just let your body drape forwards over the bench and allow the weight to pull you forwards into the stretch position to help you find that comfortable, ideal position to be pulling from. So that's exercise number one. Exercise number two is what I call the upper back pull down. Now, for many of you, this probably looks a lot like your typical lat pull down, and it is. But the fact is, what we typically call the lat pull down is usually a lot less lat stimulus and a lot more upper back stimulus due to the alignment created by the machine. Even if you were to try to make a lat pull down more lat, it will still be, for the most part, a better exercise for the upper back. Now, one cue that I find really helpful for training the upper back on both rows and pull down motions is to think about pulling the handles apart and not down as you perform the movements. This becomes really helpful when you're doing something with unilateral handles like I am. One of my favorite setups, if you don't have a unilateral setup, is to simply loop stirrup handles over a fixed bar. Not only does it allow you to create more freedom at the elbows and wrists for a more personalized fit for your structure, but if you also have an anchor point like on this setup here, it allows you to have something to forcefully rip out against as you pull, which is fantastic for setting up the appropriate arm path for the upper back. You see, when you pull apart, it causes your elbows to pull not in this straight back fashion, which might be better for pure rear delts, but more in this arcing motion around your body, which helps to guide your shoulder blades around your rib cage and into that retracted position. If you've never tried it out, give it a shot because it's an absolute game changer cue for getting as much as you can out of the upper back. Now again, I'm doing this on a basic lat pull down machine, but there's no reason why this couldn't also be performed as pull ups or different pull up variations or in other machines or with cables or bands, depending on whatever you have available in your gym or at home or whatever it is that you're training. All right, so there you have it guys, my top two favorite movements for the upper back. Give them a shot and let me know how you go with them. Hope you enjoyed this video and thank you all for watching this all the way through if you're still here. Drop any questions you might have below and I'll see all of you people next time.